Okay, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the monthly committee meeting for October. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Um, I see Alexis Kim, Clark Henry, Sarah Strayer, um, Denise, Councilwoman Denise Murphy McGraw, um, Police Chief Fran Wall, Jean Fody, Kevin Walsh, um, Dennis. Brennan, our historian, Michelle Martin Melly, Stan Paminski, and then who is joining us from the telephone whose last whose phone number ends in star seven? Laura, I'm going to be joining in, in about two minutes by telephone. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thank we should be getting Councilman Delarada any minute and the supervisor. Okay. So is star seven you, Paul Webster? He might be. He has okay. a hard time on. I think that oh. is it's star six. I bet you it's Paul. Um, okay. Hey, Laura, that was Josh Hawley. Oh, oh. Josh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Josh. Okay, Laura. Okay. So I didn't receive any um, public concerns via email. I don't think we have anybody on the line. Nobody asked for the link. Um, we. Didn't, I wasn't able to get the minutes done, even though I listened to the meeting twice last month. But so we'll have two sets of minutes at the next meeting. Um, and so I'm going right into our updates. At our last meeting, we talked for a long time about looking at the rates for community choice aggregation. Um, a couple of the other big parts of the community choice aggravation community really did want to go on pause. You know, we were willing to look, but obviously, if we needed to go on pause, we were happy to do whatever made the most sense. And the region went on pause. So the community choice aggregation right now is paused. Um, we're gonna continue, um, we're all still aggregated. We're gonna continue to speak with each other and talk with each other and um, we will uh, see where that goes. Still very much in support of it. There's just a lot of fluctuation in the, in the energy prices right now. And there's a lot of, like they're just worried about bandwidth with the COVID and everything. So, so we just put that one on pause for now. Um, I can come back to this quickly if John Delarana wants me to later. So I'll just briefly say that Rivers Ledge, we've had a lot of discussions with them lately about their timeline and their engineering, and their water and sewer. And the intent um, is, for them is to start beginning full construction, offsite utilities, everything starting up, uh, you know, probably late November, or, sorry, late October. Um, we did send that email out, I think, in March about them blasting. They were able to blast for, I think, two weeks, and then COVID shut everything down. So they are not done blasting. We will send out another email to residents um, letting them know that because there's so much bedrock, they they have to do a little uh, blasting um, to get the foundation and get the site graded. So that's also going to start up in October. So we'll send that information out when they're ready. And then the Vincenzo subdivision was um, has had a good deal of clearing over there and uh, building permits have been issued. So there's one existing single family home on that subdivision. There's three proposed new homes. Building permits have been issued for the, the, the first new home off of Vincenzo. So all work over on the Vincenzo side is authorized. Um, I think that the, the, the second home, there's the lot three, the home, off of St. Gerard is okay to be issued. It just needs to be paid for and picked up. And the fourth one is under review. So the building permits are coming out in rapid succession over there. Um, we've got a TDE looking at everything. Um, so I, you know, that is progressing pretty quickly following planning board approval. If anybody has any questions on any of those. Okay. I'm hey, Laura. Yeah, go ahead. This is John. Okay. Good morning. When did you say we were blasting on River's Ledge or they were hoping to start blasting? Well, yeah, so we did that email to residents just so that they would know what was going on. Um, and I think we did that like a week before they start. And they were talking about late October. So I would think that if they stick to their schedule, we'll probably do an email to everybody um, just letting them know about the blasting like a week before it starts. So probably like mid-October potentially. Okay. Do, we, do you know, is, is it a a big portion of land that they're blasting or is it just a small part? 
So they actually did this um, in March. They blasted for about two weeks. It's a fair amount of land because they were hoping when they dug that, like, if you guys remember in Banker Ave when they hit jail, they were actually able to dig through it with a bucket loader. I mean, it was rough. Mm -hmm but they were able to kind of break it apart and scoop it. Unfortunately, the shale over on, on River's Ledge wasn't the same. <laughs> so, okay. So, I mean, they right. basically, it's pretty interesting. We had a video, like, they put, put explosives in the rock. They're pretty small explosives. And then they covered over with a blanket, like a really thick weighted blanket. And then they explode it, and nothing goes anywhere. It all stays under the blanket. It goes, thunk. <laughs> the blanket moves up and yeah. it comes down. And then they scoop it all out. Yeah, it is really cool. I've seen it before. And it's kind of a big operation with cranes and putting those big pads over the blasting area and everything. But um, that's great that they're moving forward on that. I'm very happy to hear that. An interesting and can you just repeat? Sorry, what? Can you just repeat what you said about Vincenzo Lane? Um, oh, sure. Yeah, Vincenzo. Yeah. I was just saying that, um, you know, they have one existing home and three new homes that are out that were approved by the planning board. The one home on Vincenzo drive, the new home is got a building permit issued. They're okay to be working. They um, are excavating. They've cleared that, that Vincenzo side is good to go. The St. Gerard side, there's one single family home permit that's ready to go. And so work could start there any day. And then the fourth house um, is under review, but I, I don't know that I know of any outstanding issues on it. So I would expect that that home building permit would be issued shortly. So those building permits, um, you know, came in pretty fast after planning board approval and are proceeding. Um, now, when you say the fourth house, you mean the third new house? The third new house, yes. Yeah. Right? The fourth okay. house is actually, it's the one that's on the biggest parcel and it's set the farthest away from homes and you know i know there's a lot of concern with limits of clearing we're trying really hard to keep track of the limits of clearing um we're responding you know to concerns as any time that we can um trying to work with the developer on everything and you know make sure that the information's out to the residents but i think that you know over the course of the next few days you're probably going to have all three building permits issued and that work allowed and then he is also having to and matt can chime in here put a water line in on the St. Gerard stub. So there'll be a little bit of construction on the north side of Antonio when he's putting that water line in and fire hydrant. Thank you. Um, yeah, did anybody else have any questions on those? Okay, so um, moving on to resolutions. Um, the first thing in your packet is a very long detailed set of plans for upgrades to the aqueduct park and this dovetails right into river's ledge um so river's ledge is pledging to do or was required by the town board and planning board to do two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of improvements to the aqueduct park um to offset you know like uh, some of their parkland fees and um they've come up with a set of plans just to pull them up here so we can take a look really quick um some of it i need to share my screen sorry is taking trees down because there's a fair amount of ash trees and older trees <clears throat> trees that are leaning <clears throat> sorry um there's some old willow trees that i absolutely love but they're definitely in decline and so these um and then the plan would be to take you know, to take the trees that they had an arborist come in and say weren't good down, and then to build a new park, do a lot of replanting, um, take out a lot of the underbrush. And one of the big things that they want to do is um, take all of those piles of the aqueduct stones and use them so that there won't be kind of any unsightly piles of stones at the park down there anymore. Um, so they've got like treatments along here. This is probably not the right screen to show you. That's the tree removal plan. Um, this may be a little bit out of budget, but like they want to do these um, like patio block kind of bump outs so that you can have these direct line of sights to the river. This is um, a trail down here to river access. 
and they've got like these um, aqueduct block structures that you can kind of sit on or kids can climb around on. They're only two layers, so it's not dangerous, but it gives some tactile feel to those stones. Um, these, uh, these lines here are, they would essentially put the stones at flush to ground level and make trails almost like, uh, you know, like railroad tracks, but you can be walking along the aqueduct stones. Um, so that's gonna take a lot of time, but I think it's a good use of the stones. And based on how many stones they have will be like how close the stones are together as you're walking along the, the aqueduct stone road. So they have, you know, an aqueduct stone road that's going this way, and then they have the stone dust trail and they kind of crisscross each other as you're going through. Um, and they've got two pavilions, one near the parking lot, um, which would hopefully be rentable, good space. They would upgrade the parking lot so that it can fit, you know, a 22 foot width and the cars on either side. And um, they've got some rain gardens and stuff to deal with some of the wetness down there. It is the old canal bed. So it's filled with fill and it does drain pretty good. But there is some um, water that they want to make sure that they're catching and they've got a nice planting plan for that. So this is um, Canal Corps land and it requires a seeker. And we essentially have done seekers all around this, but not specifically for these parkland improvements. So what the idea is right now is um, CAC will take a look at this um, next week. And then if you guys are comfortable with it, um, we would take a look at the trees being removed, take a look at the whole plan. I'll send you the trees being removed, why the trees are being removed, um, what the plans are for replanting, and then what we want to do with it as a park, and take all of that together and do a secret determination, and that would allow us to do application to the Canal Corps for these parkland improvements, if that makes sense. Any questions on that one? No, that looks great. Laura, if I wanted to drive down there, would the easiest access be where that, um, where the wells, you know, the wells, uh, what was that? Um, no. Nursery was? Too is it, too far. That is it No, you'd want to drive far? right between, so you want to drive right between Smith's Garage and the Boathouse right by the Rexford Bridge. So you go around oh, the track, yeah. go right through that entrance where the rowing club launches and then actually keep driving in the parking lot for this, for this park right now is right there. Oh, so it's pretty close. So the project is close to the, it's close to closer to the Rexford Bridge, I think, than I think. Yeah, it's okay. I'll tell you. It's okay. actually, I mean, it's actually directly adjacent to Rivers Ledge, right? So here's the redevelopment of. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, here's the redevelopment of Rivers Ledge. This is the rowing club stock. Here's the Rexford Bridge here, and this is the park improvements that I was just showing you. It's this section yeah. here. Yeah, I'm trying to follow it on my iPad, so I can't see what you're pulling up. So I'm probably looking at a different oh, page, but that's all right. I got, I, I kind of got it. I got the picture. Yeah, and um, um, they're tr they're trying to keep the budget. They may be slightly over budget if they do those pavilions. They were thinking maybe for those pavilions we could do like a sell your own brick program. Although people in this unit might be a little maxed out on sell your own brick because that's what we did at town hall. But there might be other things and ways that we can do to augment so that we can get those nice um, paver patios for people to enjoy the river. We've, we've, we've said before, we actually, for a town that's bordered on like three sides by the river, we actually have not as much public access <laughs> as you would think. So anything that we can do to get people in the river is obviously a good thing. Agree. Okay, so the next one I have on there is, oops. Um, a resolution to set fees for chicken permits. Um, so we we decided to separate it out so that we weren't um, weren't doing too many things right before the um, town board meeting. But we we did pass the chicken code, and it does say that we're going to set the fees by resolution. Um, so we talked about at our last meeting, and I'm just making sure everybody's on the same page that we would set the chicken coop fees for just as we generally handle building permits. So, you know, for just a regular old building permit, it would be $50 if it was under $1,000. If it was more than $1,000, it's $10 for every $1,000 after. So like a $3,000 chicken coop would be a $70 permit. 
And then if it, you know, if you're building a really, really expensive um, chicken coop, then the permit gets more expensive because it would theoretically need more uh, building inspector review. And then the annual fees would also be set by resolution. And just to be consistent with the annual fees that we co collect for our other um, renewable permits, it would be $25 for each year. All right, and then what about enforcement? Did we, did we do anything different with enforcement? We left the chicken code with the building inspectors enforcing all of the co like the zoning code parts of it. Um, I did see Fran on the line, which is great. Maybe she can jump in. We did say that when if the chickens get loose or there's something more immediate, the building inspectors really don't ch ch chase the chickens around the neighborhood um but the dog warden doesn't really do that either so um, we didn't finalize the enforcement i mean we finalized the zoning code enforcement part of it the building inspectors will do that it's just um kind of like if the animal gets loose what happens well let's say a chicken does get loose i mean does it, it does it have to be a concern it's it's you know it's a chicken so it's either going to get, it's either going to come back or it's going to get eaten or, you know, maybe somebody's going to run it over. But I don't know, if, I don't know, th does that require a lot of attention to worry about a loose chicken? I don't think we need to send police officers there, in other words. Or do we? What do you, is, is Chief Wall on? Did I hear? I am on. What do you think about that? Well, not to put I, me on the spot or anything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about chickens. Um, I imagine it can can cause a traffic issue, depending on you know what road, of course. Um, Dave Stern mm. has said that he, if he's working, he will respond. Um, um, but I guess we're gonna it's gonna we're gonna kind of have to see how how it plays out. So, if I may ask a quick question. So, is there any way of knowing when the chicken gets out where to bring it back to? Are, are chickens tagged in some way? Are chicken? I mean, obviously, we're not going to license the chicken, but I don't think so because it's not it's not a domesticated pet, right? It's not domesticated in any way. I mean, this could be recommended. I don't know. That was just a thought. Once somebody catches a chicken, where do they bring it? If they don't know what home it belongs to. Right. And right. the families don't report a chicken that got loose. Well, so they're, they're like when they do hens, right? At least from the building department, can we, can, are they going to have some type of list as, as far as who's got the pens? Yes, we will. Yeah, that's, yeah, and, and maybe if it makes sense, because um, I think it's rare. I do know of a time when we were getting calls on a rooster that was running around the neighborhoods, and the police went out, and they were trying to find it. I do remember that. It was quite a, quite a number of years ago. But, um, yeah, we would have a list of active um, chicken licensed places, and so we could share that with the police. If a chicken did get out, they could obviously go to the nearest one on the list and yeah, so at least if we if we have that list, we can at least, you know, start calling the people that have it in that area. Yeah. That well, what do we have to do any of that stuff? Why would we have to gather up a chicken? I guess it could be a traffic issue. That would probably be the only reason, right? And I do remember turkeys every now and then will, will gobble across Ball Town Road here. I think I remember police kind of shoo them away one time. Chief Wall, but I don't know that this would be that big of a deal because chickens are so small. I mean, I guess people could swerve. Nobody wants to kill a chicken, right? But it's like not wanting to kill a squirrel. Right. They're not going to have an accident over it, I would hope. I, I don't really see them being that much of an issue. I think more of it is going to be more neighbor neighbor dispute, to tell you the truth. That's more what I see being the issue. Mm hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, my suggestion would be we 
not that I want to create a problem down the, the road, but we leave the zoning, the zoning code enforcement, I think is clear and strong in the code. Um, and then I guess we, we see if, if chickens getting loose really starts to become a problem, but may not be. Yeah, we probably are thinking about problems that we won't have to, hopefully. Okay, so is everybody okay with the fees as outlined from our last meeting? Do we want to move forward with them that way? I know people had a question on whether or not that's cost, that's covering the cost of um, our review and it's probably not wholly but I would say generally speaking none of our building permits cover the cost wholly of our building department and that's probably a larger conversation if you guys really would want um, building permit fees to cover the cost the full cost of you know the engineering inspection and enforcement um, we'd probably want to change fees across the board and I don't know what the appetite is for that right now so my suggestion yeah, is I don't know if that's is, is that always the intention of a fee or is it to supplement, you know, the taxes that people are already paying? I don't know if you'd have to, that, that could be quite a complex configuration. You know, I mean, people pay taxes. Does, you know, does none of the taxes go to any building permit fees or, and the like. So I don't, I don't want to get crazy with fees, but they should, there should be some type of correlation, I guess. Yeah, I think, and I was actually, because of that question, I was looking at our revenue from building permits, you know, versus like, you know, our our overall budget. I mean, I think it's somewhere in the range of like half. <laughs> so, and that's just, a, that's just a wag. So I think that's probably fair and consistent with how we um, bill our other building permits is probably just about half is my is my guess. I think it's consistent with what the other stuff is that we do. Well, I have no problem with it. Okay, and uh, my st um, department has already started preparing the permit and the supplement forms. Um, if you guys wanna see them when they're ready, I'm happy to send them out, it's just following the code. Um, so we should be ready by November 1st. So we'll put the fees on for October and um, keep that guy rolling. And then um, my, uh, Next resolution is the resolution awarding a contract for River Road. Um, this is a grant from Phil Steck and that we bonded for. We've got it out on the, in the paper and out in the world right now to do the drainage on a couple of the softball fields, to do some uh, paths and pavilions and a bathroom. And um, I think that the intent is at least to try and get the field, the drainage on the fields done this fall, early winter. And then, you know, you can do the bathrooms and the paths and stuff in the spring when it's not going to impact um, the softball. And so hopefully we'll have all of those um, bids in here, I think, in the next week. And then we'll sort through them and have a, a, a contractor ready for you guys at the end of the month is the intent of that. That one is obviously grant and already bonded. So as long as everything comes in budgeted, um, we should be good to go as long as you guys are happy. Um, and then I was going to add a verbal fourth resolution, if I may. I was doing the planning board packets last night and realized that there's a potential, it's very likely, that um, there's a child care um, application for a daycare going into the old town hall on Ball Town Road. And um, I think it's a special use permit process. These are the like kind of most mildest special use permits that we ever have. It's like when a daycare moves in with a church or a daycare moves, you know, into a building. Um, but I think that it's probably required. And so in the, in the you know, because of the way that it spreads out across meetings, I would request that if it is so required that we ask to call for a public hearing on the, um, on the special use permit for a daycare at the Old Town Hall on Ball Town Road. Um, so that we could at least have that hearing scheduled for November, which is already two months out. That's fine, uh, Laura, but wasn't, didn't that used to be a daycare center and then they moved into a church and it was vacant for a while? Or am I thinking of something else? No, that's exactly the right spot. And if there's a way that it can still work without a special use permit, it just seems like paper pushing to make them do a special use permit. But technically, when the Nikuna Community Daycare moved to the church, um, that spot became vacant. And um, I mean, I can talk to Paul about it, but I believe that if you know a special use permit isn't in use for over a year, uh, it expires. And then I was 
hopeful because then we had another application for a daycare to go in there in 2018. Um, but something happened to those guys. But if a special use permit had been granted to them, I was like, well, you know, if it had been a few years, you know, the site plan approval will still be there. But um, we didn't get a special use permit. So unless there's like a way to extend kind of the previous approvals, which, you know, I'm happy to talk about Paul as I think it might need a special use permit. So I just want to put it out there so that, you know, so that we're not messing up the timing if it's needed. Sounds good. Okay. Um, the planning board has been working on the Celts Farm average density development. We had um, a couple iterations of the plan go back and forth since the town board granted the special use permit with no road connection. We've, I think the two, I think generally speaking, like we bent, and I'll share my screen again. Um, we bent the cul-de-sac down a bit and um, had to change a couple of the houses around because of the wetlands. But I think generally speaking, and Kevin jump in here, that the location of the houses, I mean, I still want the houses to be squeezed in a little, but the location of the houses I think is pretty good now. And then we've been working on the, the width of the um, multi-use path and emergency access. And it does, I don't, I don't think it looks a whole lot different. We switched some of the houses around. One of the big areas was over in here. There's a wetland. Um, he was trying to make it public space, but I thought that might not work out. So he just shared the lot line between the two properties and rotated one of the houses. Um, and uh, the county didn't like the emergency access over here because we were afraid it was gonna make a herd trail. So we're trying to get everybody to come down Windsor Drive, curl around the Celts farm and cross here. Um, I know that the residents on Windsor Drive really felt like we were potentially making the multi-use path wider as a backdoor way of getting a road in there someday. Um, and I'm trying to explain, um, had like a couple of good discussions, well, hopefully good discussions with them <laughs> on what the width of the access really could be and what the width of the multi-use path really should be. Um, and then we had some good discussions on, you know, the deed restrictions for the open space because the CAC had looked at this and thought it was really important to keep that as open space. So I think we're, we're getting there, we're settling. It's a big point of discussion right now. Um, but I think that Kevin, jump in here, the intent of the planning board is to try and get this locked in and then we'll really just start the engineering. Um, anybody have any comments on that? Trying to get my microphone. My computer is getting slow or something here, but uh, no, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's the discussion tomorrow night. We'd like to, um, you know, I know we're all anxious to bring this at least to the current closure so that he can start engineering and um, and we can get through, you know, whatever engineering issues may come up with uh, the town or with the uh, town designated engineer and uh, get Joel started and uh, we'll move on to the lock seven uh, or not lock seven, uh, route seven project that we're probably going to talk about in a minute which uh, should also be interesting. Yeah, so, and then I know the planning board really kind of pushed back on this, but um, I can't help it. I just love the flowers and I love parks and green spaces and I'm really not sure what use this stub is serving. Um, the residents, again, were wondering if there, and, and I think the planning board agreed that it wouldn't be a developer action to remove this stub, it would be like, a town board thing. But um, John, I don't know what your thoughts are, or the town board's thoughts. Um, if the residents may be willing to kind of pool together to get a park to actually like, you know, work, you know, donate some a park here so that, you know, we could shorten this pavement way back um, and then put some green space and trees. And I, I talked to Joel, he's even willing to scrape up some of the topsoil with lupins and bring them over here. Um, just to make this a more attractive thing. I mean, right now it's just a dead end to a wetland. So I don't know what the appetite is for that. I know the planning board's really mixed on it. Oh my gosh. Sorry, there's a spider coming down from my ceiling. <laughs> oh, my hair. <laughs> that was exciting. I mean, if it's, not in a, if it's not at a great expense, I think it's a good idea. 
Um, and Kevin, just real quick, I, th- there seemed to be some confusion with the neighbors over the resolution and then what was going to happen with the emergency access road. Has that, and I don't really know what the confusion was, but has that all kind of been resolved or are the neighbors still um, saying that there's something going on that wasn't part of the resolution? Well, I mean, uh, uh, if Denise is on, she can also speak to this. Uh, we had a meeting, you know, I sat in on the meeting that uh, Laura set up with the neighbors. So, yes, the neighbors are still concerned. Um, but again, uh, you know, we, we understand the, 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 uh, the resolu- you know, the resolution that was passed by the town board and the, the plan is to, uh, abide by it. Uh, we're just trying to settle on, uh, the, the width of the multi-purpose walkway to make sure it's, uh, uh, satisfactory to, to be able to handle, uh, uh, the heavy load we're expected there. And also, you know, if there is an emergency with emergency access, which we don't expect it, hopefully don't expect it ever be used but it would be able to be used if there was an emergency on River Road where there was no access or a large fire. And uh, I think that's where we're at. And uh, I'll be looking forward to um, the discussion on Monday night. Uh, Mr. DRPino and Mr. McPartland are project leads and uh, um, and we'll have discussion to hopefully bring this to closure at that meeting. So Joel can- that, That's great. So so the main issue then is, is it strictly the width of that access road? Is that is that what the issue is or is there- well, it's, it's not an access road. It's the uh, multi-purpose walkway, uh, bike path. Um, Laura yep. pulled up some uh, guidance that says you need at least a minimum of 10 for ADA compliance, and but it recommended for a heavier use of walkway, uh, 12-foot minimum. And I think that's what shows on the drawing right now is a 12-foot minimum. So if everybody's okay with that, I think we're in good shape. Um, you can recall from the, the notes that uh, uh, Laura met, and I was able to make it with both police chiefs of Dif- District 1 and 2, and I believe they stated that uh, for uh, for their um, emergency access, they requested a 12 to 14 foot minimum, uh, plus making sure you have um, you know, uh, no overhead obstructions, which I don't expect unless we plant a tree too close to the, the multi-purpose walkway. So personally, I think we're, you know, I think we're there, but... Um, I, you know, I think we're there. That's Good. my opinion. Excellent. Okay. Thank think, you, Kathy. Um, uh, Don, I think what I heard from the residents kind of post our roundtable was that making sure that the deed restriction, like um, n- forever wild area was strong and they're, you know, happy to help with us on that. And obviously that's the intent of the CAC. So I'm happy to work on that and then me if there's a way to do something with the stub to make it look a whole lot more nicer i think that would also go a long way with um making them feel a little better um i think probably like it would have i don't know i mean i would think that the town board would have to do a resolution saying that they're you know like i I don't really know (laughs) saying it's okay to remove the um asphalt on the stub because it's your road the planning board can't actually do that it's your road Okay. Yeah, I, I got you. Um, I guess we'll 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 figure it out. Okay. Probably a question for for Mr. Briggs, right? Yeah. Poor Paul. I gave him a million questions. I'm very sorry, Paul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so does that bring us to Shannon Boulevard? Yeah. Yep. Um, I've got the Shannon Boulevard up here, and um. So this is uh, just a sketch plan and it really hasn't been vetted a whole lot. Got stuck in Clark and I spam. I actually never got it. Clark finally got it. Um, We haven't had a whole lot of time to sit down and really check um, codes and regulations, but this is the corner of Shannon and Route 7. This is that historical home that sits up on the hill. People are kind of noticing it because it was a little bit covered by brush and kind of um, overgrown and the um, new owner took all of the trees down. Well, not the trees. He cleared all the brush away from the home. He limbed some of the trees and um, he's got like pot, a pod out there and he's cleaning up the inside of the house. So it's much more noticeable than it used to be when you drive up and down Route 7. Um, I think he just took like, you know, the bulk um, area of this large parcel and uh, divided it into five lots. There's some questions that we have to figure out. It's a split zone. He may have to stay out of the LC zone entirely. Um, so there may there may just have to be per code some changes of the lot lines. It's something that Paul Briggs and I are working on. 
and I talked to Kevin about as well. We haven't, to, my, to our knowledge, had a true split zone like this in a really long time, but we may actually have another one coming up, so we just gotta make sure that we're doing the split zone right. Um, and then there's a couple other things that we're looking at, like there's a little bit of a swale here. This is pretty steep up to the north, um, but there is a potential, the complete trees looked at this really quickly, there's a potential and we'd have to work with the Nature Conservancy because obviously we, we can't direct people into their property without them being okay with it and setting up a trail. But there is a potential that you might be able to put a connection, a trail connection with the subdivision over to the, um, the to the Lysha Kill, which would be cool. Because this um, really, really steep part here is actually the Lysha Kill stream is at the bottom of that. So, and then Matt had said that there is an old water line out front of these, um, units, uh, proposed lots. So it's um, also something that we'll have to look at for maybe doing some waterline improvements. I'm sorry, I just wanted to rewind for one second. Matt did also notice that the Celts farm is going to need a water district extension unquestionably. The Celts were an outside user, right Matt? And potentially sewer. So we just, um, just put that on your radar. When he's doing his engineering, he's gonna have to do a water and a sewer report and it will come to the town board for water and sewer district extension. Did anybody have any questions on that? Hey, hey Laura, yeah, for the reason. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just gonna say, Laura. I was just... so. <laughs> go ahead, John. Who owns this land? Um, on Shannon Boulevard. It's Joel Bazoin, the same guy who's doing Cal. Right. Okay. And it looks like, is it, so it's, it's, it's a three lot subdivision? It's actually five, but that's one of the things we were talking about. It may not make sense to be five, especially with the LC zone there. Um, you may have to shorten it up. We'll see. That's something that we're looking at. It's very preliminary, um, but but it already has a lot of attention. Um, the neighbors across the street noticed the clearing there. You know, they felt like yeah. um, they were sold the homes with the understanding that the land across from them was forever wild. So, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of attention to Somebody it. Somebody actually told me that Niskayuna owned the land and they were going up there and cutting down trees on Niskayuna Park land. I said, I don't <laughs> think that's the case. Yeah, we, we yeah. do own adjacent lands. Like, um, I know you can't see it on your phone, but farther north on this is town owned open space. Um, mm -hmm. Which we do own, but I've sent a building inspector out there a couple of times. We do go out and look every time we get a complaint, and we haven't seen anything that's crossed any lines. I mean, we don't find lot lines, but um, it seems as though it's all, generally speaking, been around the house as cleanup so far. So, so the map that we're looking at, though, is there another map? The one that I'm looking at only shows three lots. Is there one that's proposed with five, or maybe I just can't see it? It's probably you can't see it. There's actually so there's two down here. This is the existing home, and this is another lot that would access off of Route Seven. Oh, and then okay. I and then thought there's those three were lots existing. off of Shannon. Okay. Yeah, no. And then there's three lots off of Shannon. So okay, I okay. got you. And right now they're clearing probably the middle lot of the three lots off of Shannon, or are all or the whole uh, area. They really are not clearing anything except around the house. They did mow like. Here, this is just to show you the split zoning. They did mow along here, which the town, I guess town, the town typically mows along here because this parcel up here is town owned. Um, and they were mowing and doing some cleanup and clearing along the right of way. All right. Um, yeah, the only thing I want okay. to mention more of I'm sorry again. Laura, is that... Um, no, nope, nope. <laughs> Go, go, go. Go ahead. No, it's all you, Kev. Oh, okay. And I just wanted to mention quickly, Joel Bazoin was supposed to reach out to the, our historian, uh, Mr. Brennan, regarding uh, some uh, old documents that he found in the home there. So you'll be hearing from him, uh, Dennis. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm actually gonna see uh, see some of the documents later today. So thanks. Oh, nice. Okay. Oops. I'm gonna try and move a little faster because I know that we started a little late and we all have things to do. Um, 
Hey, Jean, are you listening? Can you just call Janet real quick and tell her we're about to get to the grants? Um, we've got three cases scheduled for the zoning board. And um, one of them is the, oh, sorry, the Aqueduct Animal Hospital is the last thing that I really want to talk to you guys about. And that's, um, there's a proposal right now before the planning board that um, would take the Aqueduct Animal Hospital on Balltown Road and convert it into a six unit multifamily apartment. It needs a use variance, so that's one of the cases that's currently st scheduled for October, not August. Sorry about that. Um, but they, they because they can't go from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use, it is a use variance, but um, they would be removing the dog kennels in the rear. Um, they, right now, aren't proposing to add any new buildings, so it would be retrofitting the existing building, doing some facade upgrades. Um, so very limited impact um, for construction. Um, kind of remo removing a non-conforming use that did create some issues with the adjacent homes. Um, and then, you know, if you remove the, the, the animal kennels and structures and things like that, and you make it more of just like an outdoor area for people, multifamilies to enjoy, although it's not conforming, it's closer to conforming than it was before. And it is surrounded by residential. So I do think that it's probably a good thing for the neighborhood. Um, it's, you know, it's still tough because it's a use variance, but I can pull up the map if you guys are interested. It's Aqueduct Animal Hospital, essentially just getting, you know, kind of all the stuff in the rear yard removed and turned into a multifamily operation. So what would you probably put the parking in the rear or some in the rear, some in the back, or don't so, they know yet? Yeah, we talked about that because we would really like um, for that to happen. Um, he would like to utilize essentially mostly the existing parking for the time being until he can convert the building into into the multifamily and get and start you know pulling in some rent. Um, and I think down the road he might consider putting a second building on the property and then changing some of the parking. Um, I think I I went and found the and I can share this with you, Kevin. The parking when Dr. Pike outlined the parking when he was interested in doing expansion of his use. And, I mean, there's some in the right of way. If you add it all together, though, anything that's actually on property is just about six spaces. So the, he may have to do some things with the parking. All right, what's next? Okay, so um, so Janet joined us. Thanks, Janet. Um, River Road Park. We did the twenty-five thousand for um, the engineering. And that's um, for them to do the bid docs, collect all the bid, answer all the questions, uh, do a SWIP and construction inspection. Um, and I believe we had a lot going on at the time, but we will need a budget mod to my knowledge because you may want to wait, but I do want to put it out there. And I think that we should probably figure out where it's going to come from. But unless by some miracle, the um, the, the bids come in short, then we would have extra money for engineering. But if the bids come in right where we think they're going to come in, um, then this is over and above what we had initially budgeted for for this um, project. So um, I think Janet thought probably we, we would use fund balance unless you guys know of another way to cover the engineering for the River Road Park. Um, I would say it would be my recommendation that we have the budget mod ready to go. And then if for whatever reason, we have a little bit extra once the construction costs come in. Great, but otherwise, I think we should have a budget mod ready to go. I agree. Okay. Um, is Yasmin here? I can see her on. Okay. Well, um, John, I mean, does fund balance sound good to you unless we can find somewhere else? I know we don't really like to take from there, but I don't think we have a whole lot of options that I know of. That's that's the appropriate. Nope. That's the appropriate option, Laura. There. Okay. Within your budget, and we don't have it in contingency. So, if it doesn't get used, it will roll back to fund balance. Okay. Good. When we close the year, that's that's what happens when you do a budget mod. Anything that doesn't get used at the end of the year in a budget, when I close the year, it rolls back to the appropriate fund balance. Okay, so can well, I'll request that to you then with that form from fund balance and we'll put it on finance. 
Yep, it's a, I already put it on for you, actually. Yay. Janet, you are amazing, amazing. Okay, and then um, the next one we have is the Aqueduct Park, and there's two things going on with Aqueduct Park. Um, the contractor ran into some delays. We didn't start the contract as early as we thought we were going to because the town was under the stop work order. So I think he had probably about a month and a half to two months delay there. And then um, there were some problems with um, the specs and fabricating the stiff arms that are going to attach to those dock sections. So um, they don't think that they're going to be able to finalize everything by this fall. And probably we want to hold the contract open until spring to make sure that when the docks are put in the spring that everything's open. So if everybody is okay with it, I will probably sign a contract extension to them so that the timeline makes sense, um, you know, with what still needs to be done for the spring. And I think that that is protective both to the town and to the rowing club just to make sure that everything's still functioning after a winter. And um, the other thing that happened is because of that delay, the engineering firm Barton LeJudas has been out there more than was originally anticipated. And I attached their supplement to finalize this and close it out and still be the project manager in the spring is an additional $5,500. Okay. Okay. Um, the critical pedestrian grant is moving along and um, they have done a pedestrian count over on St. Joseph's and attached it to this agenda statement. They worked really hard about it and they all went out and you could see probably in the documents that I attached. So they essentially sat at the intersection of River Road and St. Joseph's for an entire day. <laughs> And I've got the summary here. I think I put it in your packet. Um, they had 53 bikers, 60 pedestrians, and then they saw 150 bike cyclists um, kind of up and down that path that day. So um, we sent all that information to our engineer that's working on that grant for us. And I just really wanted to give a shout out to Complete Streets. They really did that all on their own. I've been super overwhelmed with time and they organized the time slots and organized the counts and did all of that on their own, which is totally awesome. They're planning to do one um, again. And they also wanna do one over on Knot Street just so that you know the county can have those numbers and understand why we're asking. I was driving home yesterday and um, there was a group of boys running, I think from Niskuna High School and like seven of them were just crossing the road, like like right across with traffic and everything. <laughs> so the faster we can get a crosswalk there, the better. And Complete Trees is working really hard to get the county the data that you know they need. So that was really great. I just wanted to put that in there and show you guys how hard your committees work. Um, Lord, yeah. can you just repeat those numbers again? Oh, sure. That they, that they found? Um, sorry, I closed them out. They found um, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., 53 bikers crossing River Road at St. Joseph's and 60 pedestrians crossing there. So, I mean, I'm not an expert. That seems high. And I feel like that's that quite. Sounds like, yeah, that sounds like a lot. I mean, is that more than we thought or is that about the same? Um, I don't know because this is one of those things like our engineer was struggling a little bit because there isn't like a threshold for that, but seems high to me. I mean, if you've got 150 people up and down the bike path and you've got, you know, 100 people crossing to get to the bike path, I mean, that's a yeah. half of the people that are using the bike path in that location are crossing at River Road. So, yeah, it seems like a lot. And it, yeah. I it's great. Obviously, a lot of people love that bike path. It's, and then, you know, I mean, there's a big neighborhood across the street, and that's really the only mm -hmm. way for them to get to the bike path. It makes a lot of sense. So they're sure. working hard on that, and we sent it to the engineer, and he was really happy. That saved us a lot of money because otherwise we were going to have to pay an engineering firm to go out there and do that. Um, so that was very, very awesome. Thank and then, you. Yeah, and then Upper Union Street, um, I've got a couple calls from MJ, I believe. We're trying to put that contract out to bid today. So as soon as I'm done with this meeting, I'm going to call them and see what's going on. But Michelle, I think I've got another one that I'm going to send to the newspaper. 
and I'll just organize um, for that that documentation. But I think we're ready to go out to bid for the crosswalk on Upper Union Street as well. Um, Complete Streets um, sent their uh, worked with them. You know, I had showed you guys some of the comments that we had and worked with Yasmin to send a letter to the school for the seeker and um, did comment on all of the ways that we would want to see um, additional paths to mitigate any of the traffic that comes from the school reconfiguration. Um, we do want to try and release the pandemic survey to residents still. I just put that I need help with this. <laughs> I, um, Laura, can you just step back for a second? Oh, sure. Um, what did the letter to the school district about the seeker say? I mean, obviously, we're all getting contacted about this issue. Um, it's so when, we didn't get I, a copy of it. We don't know anything about it. Oh, I put it in the packet the last at the last meeting okay. um, the comments, uh, that we wanted to put to the school. I put them. Yeah, in the and we discussed it in the last meeting, yeah. but I just didn't see the final letter. I would have thought we would have seen it because we discussed it at length at this committee. Oh, yeah, I can send it to everyone. I'm sorry. That's my bad. I should just share it. Um, we did incorporate the comments that Matt had, which we didn't discuss at our committee for stormwater, just to make sure that they were accounting for, you know, uh, um, the additional stormwater that they were sending to us too. And they did acknowledge that they received it. So hopefully that's helpful. And I Great. will send you everyone on that committee. Yep. Um, if anybody here can help me with the survey, I very much appreciate it. That's all I've got to say about it. <laughs> And then um, the other big complete sheets thing, and I'm still trying to coordinate this with Ray, is the, the fall program that we had talked about. Um, they have put together an outline of what the fall program could be. I attached their narrative of what they were thinking, and I can just, you know, pop up a map quickly. Um, they, we had talked about Clifton Park, but with everything that was going on, they thought that it would probably be better to move the um, demonstration just a little bit away from the heavy, heavy traffic and um, put it somewhere that we could um, <clears throat> note to everybody so that they could go and check it out. Let me just put the map up really quick. And here's what we do. What we're talking about is putting um, chicanes on a couple of places on uh, Regent between Almeria and Story and then doing Sharrows and then doing a, like a pop-up crosswalk across Barcelona. And I actually think they're still working on finalizing the map and I have to obviously bring this around and make sure that everybody's okay with it. But um, it allows for space for pedestrians on either side. It shows you what breaking up the visual corridor would look like and um, add some, you know, pedestrian amen amenities to the street. And so the idea would be, we put a sign at either end saying like, this is our demonstration project. We put out an email blast saying, you know, come drive, come walk, come bike, send us what your comments are. Everybody can do it in their own time in a socially distant way and then be like, hey, yeah, I mean, definitely slowed cars down. I really want to see it. Or like, nope, this was a total disaster. I don't like it. Don't ever put this here. <laughs> um, that's kind of like the input and the idea that we're thinking of there. And is that a highway committee issue, Laura? I mean, it is. I have been trying to coordinate it with Highway for the last couple of days. I do want to put it on their agenda um, and get yeah. their sense of it as well. Um, so, and then how would that fit with like we have to pick up leaves and stuff? Oh right yeah, now? we had that question. So we, um, what we did was we looked at the leaf picking up schedule and mm -hmm. um, we put it uh, like that zone. I think is a, is pick up on October twelfth to. 16th. So I think that we um, thought if we scheduled it on the 17th, if we had it open the week after a leaf pickup, hopefully um, it would allow all those leaves to be picked up. Then we could have the, you know, the, the, the temporary infrastructure up there for a week and then take it down and then it would fold right into the next week when they do the pickup there again. Okay. Um, but yeah, it still needs some vetting. I just... I bring it up at both committees because I do. That's what I do. Um, did anybody have any thoughts or questions about that? Okay. 
Um, Tree Council's got the Liberty Elms being delivered over the next couple days. So we're potentially putting about 20 trees at Blatnick Park on that steep slope that's hard to mow. And I'm really excited about that to get a bunch of, to get a line of, you know, I think in parks lines of trees are just fantastic and it's going to look really good. Um, and the Conservation Advisory Council, oh, I didn't attach that, has continued to work on the letter that I had at the last meeting. It's looking really good. We're going to talk about it at our next Conservation Advisory Council and hopefully get that out to people shortly. Um, Climate Smart Communities Task Force, I need to schedule the next meeting with them. They're a good group and we've got a lot of initiatives to work on, so it's really just a matter of scheduling. Um, Clark, do you just want to talk about what the Architectural Review Board's looking at real quick? I can give a really quick update. They're looking at three projects, 2804 Aqueduct Road, which is Matia restoration of a building. Uh, there's actually a meeting there next Friday on the 9th. Um, 2538 River Road, Kel the Kelts Farm project. Um, we had a very good working session with Joel Bzoin, the developer, making sure that the townhouses have a variety of appearances, uh, some with stone, some without stone. Um, single family homes will be what um, Joel is calling an executive ranch design that he's used elsewhere that looked very appealing. So there's some very nice work going on there. 2627 Troy Road, uh, we mentioned previously the renovation of a historic home uh, by Shannon Boulevard. So there's some good good engagement between the ARB and Joel Bazoin. And we're also working on developing promotional materials for the ARB that we'll add to the website so that we can get to people when they're planning their project asking for a building permit or something like that, getting to them early so they know the ARB exists. And we had one uh, gentleman come in this week with a project for an addition and we're recommending him to the ARB. So there's some very good engagement by the board. Thanks, Clark. Um, building department still has a very high volume of building permits, has not slowed down yet. Um, and then just letting everybody know the 24 credits that the building inspectors are required to get every year um, are, are we're still required COVID or no COVID, which I'm fine with because it's a life safety issue. <laughs> um, but so both of them are going to have to do some uh, pretty lengthy training in October. I think the dates are the 16th and the 17th. Uh, no, 19th and 20th. We won't have building inspections because they're going to both be at training that they need to get all of their credits in so that they're fully certified. Um, planning department, just following through on all the stuff above. Um, Paul, do you wanna just, do, do you have any updates on um, the Vincenzo deed restrictions or anything else that you and I have been working on? I'm sorry to give you so much work. <laughs> Poor Paul, he's gone. He's working on those things. I don't things. think Paul's on. He oh, had to go to current. Okay. Well, he's been, I don't think so, yeah. so he's been working on the split zoning with me. He's working on making sure that the language in the Vincenzo deed restrictions is right. And um, I, there's a couple other things that he's been working on with me. So I appreciate um, what he's been doing lately. That's, and I know he's really busy. So, okay, Dennis, um, I told you I left the kind of things on there for you to talk about. It's up to you. What I didn't, I wasn't able to talk to you beforehand, but anything you want to talk about there is great. Oh, you're muted. Uh, find the right button. Uh, <clears throat> okay, thanks, Laura. Uh, but yeah, very quickly, the uh, the town board, of course, approved the register uh, for historic places at the last meeting. So we're moving along with uh, putting together formal procedures for um, how we're going to decide which homes to put on the register. We're going to try to follow New York State guidelines so that any house gets put on the, our register Hopefully, we'll be able to qualify for being put on the, the state register as well. Uh, so we're moving along with that and hope to start doing it in uh, 2021. Um, in Rosendale Common School, uh, the Friends Program, <clears throat> Matt Wall, I communicated with him a couple of days ago. He's still um, putting in a lot of time with the census, but that should be over on October 5th, and he hopes to then move forward with um, maybe a formal meeting with people who have responded to his resolution or his proposal uh, and then get the uh, uh, the friends group organized and moving along. 
And finally, as I mentioned a little while ago, I talked with Joel yesterday briefly. Thank you for making that connection, Kevin and, and Laura. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be going over to Mesocom uh, in a little while. Uh, he has, uh, uh, he says there's a lot of old books and a, an old hope chest, uh, which he thinks somebody built and he thinks there's some writing in it. Anyway, I, I'm going to go over and see what he has. And I appreciate him bringing that to our attention. So that's it for me. Thanks, Dennis. If anybody has any questions. <laughs> I appreciate all that work. Um, so I don't have anything else unless anybody else had anything to add to the meeting. Sorry it went so long. Um, Laura, That's okay. Can you just... Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't know if John's going to help you with this, but do you? Can you go back to the um, pandemic survey? I'm sorry, I must have missed that last month. Did we talk about that? Oh. Um... That's the, so the Complete Streets has actually made this quite a long time ago. It's just a survey that we wanted to put out to residents that asks them, like, if their mobility changed during the pandemic, after the uh, pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, if there's, if there's things that while they were walking that they noticed. And because I think it would be interesting to see, like, the Complete Streets kind of has a list of priorities. But if we could get good responses to people of where they really feel like they would like to see, um, you know, changes, it would be interesting to compare that to our map and see if like we're online with what people who are really out there walking or just started walking see. Um, and then we also had the other thing that we talked about putting in there was the two questions. Do you use the St. Joseph's crosswalk or would you? Right. There was one. Yeah. And then the other one, yeah. so we could show the county that we had good response to it. So um, uh, Jim Levy made it and Alexis put some of it or most of it into the program that we have, which is much better than SurveyMonkey. Um, but I mean, and it's really just me. I, you got, I got to put those last four questions in, but I don't understand how to put the questions in to the um, website. And then I can write the email blast and send it out. I really just need somebody's help kind of finalizing the questions in that website browser. Okay. And then um, just have somebody review the email blast before we send it out. Okay. I'm happy to help you. I've done the others, you know, any ones we've done, I've done. So, okay. Let me know what I could do to yeah, help it'd you. Be, it'd be similar to the chicken survey you did, right, Denise? Yes, John. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Is there anything else for the good of the order? If not, I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor? How about anybody opposed? We'll do that. Excellent. We are adjourned. Thank you, Thank everybody. You, everyone. Thank you, Laura, for your Thank patience. You. I'm sorry for the crazy morning.